Sally Konnaka. Hello, how? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Yeah. In today's video, I am doing a language tag 2022. It will probably be my final language tag because to be honest, there are only so many questions your girl can ask myself about languages. But if you can think of any new questions I've not answered about language, put them down below. I will collect them all and make a language tag video because I've exhausted my options now. <laughs> And if you notice, I have cut my hair. It's a little bit shorter. What do you think? What do you think? Today there are six language related questions. One or two of them you will have definitely heard in some of my old videos, but I've had to include them for any new people on my channel. I will also say that most of these questions, if not all, did come from Lindsay Does Languages, which I found on the internet. So credit where credit is due. Thank you, Lindsay Does Languages. Thank you very much. So the first question is, what languages do I speak? Which is obviously going to kick off any language tag video. That is English, Chinese, i.e. Mandarin, not Cantonese. Hats off to anyone who can speak Cantonese because honestly, 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 wow. Wow. Very hard. <laughs> and my third is Thai. All three at different levels, with English being my most confident, strongest, I'm fluent, I'm... English <laughs> and then it kind of goes into the levels after that in terms of Chinese is my next most fluent not fluent at all intermediate and Thai again I'd say low intermediate my second question what was my first language learning experience so obviously as English is my native language I'm not going to dive all the way back to birth and say I was but one day old when I first heard Mama, not happening. <laughs> so my first second language experience was when I was in primary school and it was French. I used to do French lessons after school. I think it was once or twice a week. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought this is it. I'm going to speak in French. Parlez-vous français? Oui. I thought I had it. I do not have it. And I do question what they even taught us because I learned French from year four, which for people who are not familiar with the British education system, year four, how old am I in year four? 10, 11. So I was around 10 or 11 when I first started learning French. I did that from 10, from about 10 or 11 until I was 16. Do I speak French? No, I do not. All I can remember from French is Bonjour, je m'appelle Victoria, j'habite à Londres avec mes familles, j'adore mes familles. <laughs> I cannot even remember. <laughs> anything. <laughs> I did a GCSE in that language, so I have an actual qualification in that language. And the other day I found my French work that I had done, French writing. I had written two pages of French. I was like, this is amazing. Was, it, was this me? Did I do this? I don't know this. What is this? I couldn't understand it. That was my first language experience, was when I was 10 or 11 in primary school, and it was learning very basic stuff like je m'appelle, bonjour, au revoir, Salut, je suis, that sort of stuff. I wish I do know how to speak French, so I'm not gonna lie, it's, very, it's a very useful language. Number three, what languages have I studied and why did I learn them? So I've included all languages that I've attempted to study, even if I've dropped them. So obviously the first one is French. I learned that, or started learning that when I was very young because I really wanted to speak French. It was just a really cool language. I thought it sounded amazing. Then I started learning Italian at school. This was in secondary school. I was about 13, 12, 13 when I started learning that one. The way my school worked is what language you learned depended on your level of intelligence. 
I don't agree with the system. I think it's a really rubbish way of determining what language you should learn. For example, so because of where I fell, like which was kind of in the middle, I had to learn French and Italian because they deemed that those were the middle level students. Then if you were really clever at my school, you would learn French and Russian with the option of doing Latin if you wanted. So those were the smart children. They didn't, they didn't even give us the option of learning Latin. I mean, that would be quite cool to learn a dead language, but no, we didn't get the option. And then if they deemed you not clever, they would make you learn Spanish, which, and you'd only learn one language, you'd only learn Spanish, which I really, 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 really hated because I really wanted to learn Spanish. I thought it was so cool. I really wanted to learn it. They wouldn't let us because they deemed we had to do it based on our grades. I really disagree with that method, still do. I think it's a rubbish way of getting children to learn languages and to determine which language they're good at because Spanish is, I would say, of those languages, probably the most useful. I tried to learn Spanish myself and I did that on Duolingo for a while and it was going okay. I was like slowly starting to understand things when I was listening to stories in Spanish, which really surprised me actually how quickly I picked it up. What stopped me is I just didn't have time to find Spanish speakers to practice with. It's a lot and I did let that slip. I really should get back into that though, to be honest. And obviously Chinese, you know, I, I study. I started learning that about, must be five years ago now. Five years ago and I'm still rubbish. <laughs> Which is why I say, come to my channel for realistic progression in language. Because I've been learning for a while and I'm still intermediate. A, 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 here's the intermediate gang. <laughs> And then of course Thai, which I learned, started learning at the beginning of the pandemic and I've really excelled very, very quickly compared to my progression in Chinese because I just approached it very differently. And then one that's very surprising that not, not people will know about is I started learning Gaelic, the Scottish version. Did I continue it? No, I did not. It's very hard. It is very hard. Like, it's like a, it's a lot of uh, sounds, which I guess with the NG in Thai is quite, but it's a lot uh, like, it's quite throaty. And the reason I started learning that is that it's actually the native language of my white side of the family, some of them anyway. And so I really wanted to just kind of have a way to connect with what my ancestors would have been speaking and learn about that. But I just did not continue because <laughs> it is very hard. And I looked into some lessons and because it is so, so, so smallly, it's not widely spoken and so therefore lessons are very expensive and I was like yeah it's a no from me I'm already paying for Chinese and Thai lessons I'm not adding on another one <laughs> so I did unfortunately let that slip too number four what are my short-term and long-term language learning goals so my short term at the moment is to be able to not need subtitles. I feel like I've said this a lot, yet here I am still needing subtitles. I will admit there are times when it's very, very basic stuff they're saying. I'm like, I don't need subtitles. The subtitles are wrong anyway. They actually said, da -da 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 -da. yeah, for more sort of complicated things, for longer shows, I definitely need subtitles. That's just the aim of the game, unfortunately. But I will get there. And of course, my long-term goal is a working proficiency. So when I say working, as in, I would want to be able to live in that country. So if it was Chinese in China, Thai in Thailand, and be able to work in an office or in a job, like not in an office, like for example, in a car, anywhere, and be able to communicate 100% in that language and be able to understand 100% of what is, or at least 90% of what's being said, should be 100% if you're working, to be honest. And that includes reading, writing, speaking, listening, all of it. So that is my long-term goal. Number five, what do I use the most when learning such what is my favorite language learning resource? I feel like I said this one in a recent video, but my favorite resource is YouTube. I think it is hands down the best resource we have. God forbid they start charging us for YouTube. Because you know, I don't trust these companies. They probably will. Probably in like a few years, you'll be watching this through a subscription that we've had to pay for YouTube. But hopefully, hopefully it remains free to us because there are so many 
good quality videos on YouTube that can really, really help you in your language learning. And then another thing that I would really recommend is a language app that allows you to connect with native speakers, such as HelloTalk, Tandem, I'm sure there are others, but I only know those two, and using that to find native speakers who you can practice with. Me, myself, that's what I have done. And honestly, sometimes I will have my friends and will be speaking in their language and also my language and the amount of time they're like wow you've really improved since we first started speaking i'm like thank you and then my sixth and final question what advice would i give to someone who is just starting out their language learning journey i would say throw yourself into it do not be scared to make mistakes do not be scared to not know not knowing is the best position to be in because then you can ask questions you can try you can fall down you can get back up and you can ask more questions and then you will know in the same vein as the answer to the previous question, find native speakers because it's all good and well being able to do everything else. But if you can't speak the language, your level is not going to be that great in terms of being able to functionally use that language. So those are my answers to this year's language learning tag. As I said, may not have one next year because I'm running out of questions. Please do put your answers to these questions that I've answered down below and let me know what you thought of this video. So as always, please do smash the like, the share and subscribe to your friends, to your family and more importantly, have a very, very blessed day. And until next time, Saudi Konnacha, Saijian, goodbye everyone.